Hello all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take my 27 year old coffee table from this to this. I worked on this project for a few days using a product I had never used before, but this is the product. It's called Min Wax Poly Shades Stain and Poly in One Step. And the, sh and the shade that I'm using is a Satin Bombay Mahogany. And uh, in this project, I'm going to show you some of the ups and downs, the pros and cons, and the troubles I was having in this project. So the first thing is my coffee table is so messed up. <laughs> I had a uh, Ikea desktop that I had put on top of it and I secured it with Velcro. It's got chips and all kinds of messed up stuff in it. So the first thing I need to do and tattoo is going to help me is remove the desktop from the coffee table. Now you'll see the little Velcro strips uh, which held the, the, the tabletop in place very well. But what I'm left with is this coffee table that I had put black contact paper on. And you may remember that from a previous video. I love this table because look, it, it's convertible and it, you can raise it and lower it. It's really good. Well, look, this black gluey contact paper was so hard to take off it was just awful so i got the heat gun out to heat the glue up and heat the material and with that in mind i was able to get all of the contact paper off through scraping and pulling within about an hour now listen to this as i was pulling 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 it's so satisfying to get that off anyway what is left is the older finish with a bunch of glue. Tattoo's not happy and I'm not happy because I know taking that glue off is going to be really, really difficult. So let's take it into the garage and uh, look at it a little bit further. Now, it's very tacky, very, very sticky. So what did I decide to do? I'm using Goo Gone or Goo Off to try to pull the glue off. Now, this proved to be very time consuming, very hard. So I tried a combination of the goo off with the with a light sandpaper. And uh, as I was doing it, it's like, okay, there's varnishes coming off and everything. So I was kind of settled into that. I was probably going to have to take the entire finish off of the tabletop. So uh, here's what I was left with after I got my palm sander, my Ryobi palm sander out. And I was able to take some of that off. But because it's glue it sticks to the sandpaper now i got this product it's a two-in-one remover varnish and paint remover and it's a fast acting gel that's good for wood metal or masonry so i got an old paintbrush i didn't mind throwing away and just poured this product straight onto the tabletop now as this was the very first finishing project i had ever done it worked well, but I ran into a problem, which we'll talk about here in just a second. So after letting the material sit there for just like two minutes, it was time to remove the, uh, the, the stripper. So I got my putty knife out and I started stripping. I was like, wow, this stuff is really, really good. It's getting down to the wood. I did end up using a steel wool pad to get around that waterfall edge around the, uh, the outside of the table. And that worked really well because it was able to get the entire groove and in the little nooks and crannies and all that kind of stuff. So I, I worked on this and tried to get all the finish off and this is what I was left with. So look, you see, that's the problem where I had poured the uh, stripper. It sat a little too long and it went further in to the finish and so I was like, well, I guess I'll have to get the sander now since the glue is off. I can use a sander and um, kind of minimize that contrast of the light and dark. So I worked on that for a little bit. And um, uh, it, you'll see here that after I sanded it, it looks so much better. I like that color, but you can still see traces of that path. So I sanded more and more and more. I got down to this really light color of the wood. And um, to, frankly, I, I really like that color. I wish it could kind of stay like that. But I knew that, you know, to make it look really authentic and beautiful, I was going to have to put a stain on it. So what I used is the Min Wax Poly Shades. Now, when using this, do not shake the cans. You don't want to add bubbles to the thing because uh, you'll never get rid of them. And uh, so stir. And then I got a fine bristle brush. I later learned that a um, natural hair brush would have been better than a polyester one, but this is what you're looking at. Look at all that goop after. You see, these sit on the shelf and it settles. So just stir and stir and stir and stir. Be patient until you finally come out with a nice, clean consistency. 
then it's time to apply. So I started on the end on the corner and you can see how the, it's kind of dripping already on the bottom side, but I work on it. And um, the thing about working with this is, well, first of all, look how beautiful that color is. I was going to, I was saying to myself, this is beautiful, but you have to be careful with your brush strokes because wherever you start a stroke, it's going, you're going to see that definition in the final finish. So I let this dry overnight to see what I had the next day. Here's what it is. It looks okay, but I have some high points and some low points, some shiny points and some matte points. So I took a 000 grade steel wool like the instructions call for, and I worked on sanding and smoothing it down. It did a pretty good job, but looking at the finish of it again, the just the coloration, I can see too many overlaps and that kind of thing. So I put another coat of stain on. And after I did that, I decided to tackle the legs and the sides. And all you have to do on a pre-finished piece is lightly sand, apply one coat and you're done. So the next morning I looked at it again and I was like, wow, this actually does look better. However, I still see a lot of starts and stops of where my brush brush went and look I have some drip edges there some drips and then I also have darker areas on the waterfall thing that really need addressing I'm not satisfied right here I am not so I got my sand my steel wool out again and I sanded it but uh, I shortly realized that this wasn't going to be enough but I gave it my best attempt so I uh, just sanded with the zero grade steel wool on the top, wiped that down. And um, then I was like, well, you know, I think that it's not taking out those uh, real thick areas. So I got a piece of sandpaper and I think this is like a 220 grit and uh, I tackled those drip edges and everything. And then I decided, let's just do the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I took it on the top and then wiped that down and I was like, hey, you know what? This is actually looking a bit better. I know it's all scuffed up, but it needs to be that way for the final coat of stain and poly to really make it look good. So after doing that and applying one more coat, I here's what here's what I have and I like it, but I needed to let it dry. So um, I put it I just left it alone, left it in the very hot garage and overnight this is what I came back to and it looks super nice. I am so happy with this project. Um, I At first I wasn't completely convinced, but after a few days it does have the chance to cure and harden even more and actually it doesn't start smelling as strong either. So you might want to wait a few days before you put it back in your home. So remember the product is Minwax Poly Shades Stain and Poly All in One. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also check out some of my other DIY projects I have on my DIY playlist and I I will see you next time.